What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Right here in the shop. I know you can hear that air leak behind me. That's what I'm working on now. Working up, finishing up some small things left on the truck uh, that don't take a whole lot of time, but it's definitely necessary. That air leak is coming from the turbo controller uh, that works the vanes in the turbo. It's got an air actuator on the side of the turbo right here. And this airline runs over to electronic controller on the other side on the bottom. And that thing looks something like this right here. Now, I've taken the old one off and took it apart and there's really nothing inside here you can fix uh, that I found but it's leaking from this is exhaust port on it down there and it's just held on with two bolts and you have an airline on the top airline on the bottom and it plugs in right there and uh, that's all there is to it but that is keeping the air pressure from building and staying see it right down in there I believe that little gadget down there so I'm gonna let the air bleed off of it and go ahead and get down there and pull that thing off as I say it's only a couple bolts and get it on out of there and then uh, see about getting the new one put on all right guys I've got the old one off it looks like the same guy there I just got to swap the air fittings out of it the only difference this one is all aluminum here this one's mostly plastic but uh, I'm sure that makes it new and improved and better right um, the one on my older truck is a different style than this and apparently they don't go bad because as far as I know it's never been changed it is the style with the filter on the bottom of it and then they come out with this newer and better style that don't last as long so I'm going to swap the air fittings over here stick this one back on there and hopefully that solves all our air leak issues and that the truck will hold air pressure for an extended period of time after I cut it off. All right guys, got the new one on there. That seems to have fixed the leakage problem there. At first when I put it on there, I could hear a little air leak and I thought the thing was leaking, but I had a, there's a line that goes inside the, inside the frame rail here that has a T on it that runs over to that thing. It was leaking also, but I couldn't hear it. Uh, before I changed that thing because it old valve was leaking so bad and uh, So anyway, I got that changed and I could hear still hear a little bit of air But wasn't as near as bad as it was so I got up under there and I found that T and I replaced that same T on my old truck when I bought it and uh, So I actually had one of them in stock. It's a quarter inch T. I try to keep those in stock because uh, of stuff like that you've got some you see there's like one right there that uh, somebody's done replaced because the ones the little plastic fittings they start leaking and uh, whatnot so I had to put some new hood latches on here the previous owner had just put a set on there last year he had told me that and uh, I couldn't get them to latch I got to looking at the jaws in them and they looked like the jaws were wore some and when I put them off, sure enough, there was a date on the bottom side of them that said they had been replaced. They were only a year old, basically. But I think what happened, this hood hadn't been latching because it was broken. And I think it was sitting here and vibrating up and down when you hit bumps and uh, wore the jaws out in there so that they would no longer latch. So we got some more new hood latches on there. So the hood uh, latches like it's supposed to. Getting ready to swap put some new tires on the front of here I've got uh, some already mounted on wheels that I've polished up look a lot better than this so I'm gonna pull these off as soon as I find a jack and uh, stand and whatnot and can do so I'm gonna pull these off and we'll stick them on there all right guys this has got these uh, plastic blood nut covers on here so we gotta take those off and then I'm gonna see that cordless steel out there will pull this off. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Um, I'm surprised that thing still works. It has given me a little bit of problem before. It's quit working, and uh, I can drop it on the ground, and it'll start back to working. So, I don't know. It's definitely had some use and abuse. I need to order me one of those uh, Milwaukee's, but have it done so I'm gonna get me another I've got a three-quarter inch drive snap-on over there that I've uh, 
had to repair a couple of times. And uh, it just doesn't seem like it's ever been that great since I bought it, really. And uh, leaks air and everything. And I've got a one inch Harbor Freight that was given to me that the trigger was leaking on. And I fixed it. That's a, uh, it's in my YouTube videos. But anyway, it works good, other than it weighs 30 pounds. And uh, it will definitely over tighten the lug nuts if you uh, tighten it with them and you're not careful. It'll strip them out and break them off for you. We'll just see if this will snatch these off today. I'm not letting off the trigger, it's stopping on its own. This thing's about wore out. Good time to go ahead and grease that while it's easy to get to. I've already changed the oil and everything in it. All that good to go.
tube of grease is empty. It makes it super easy to grease the, uh, the kingpins and your slack adjuster and everything, your S cam when you got the front tires off. You can get to everything a whole lot easier. Fill in your wheel bearings and all that because these are hub assemblies on these Volvos. They're not uh, packed bearings or not oil lube or anything like that. Well guys, let's take the other side off and I broke another ha hammer pin in the impact wrench. It won't do anything. It's locked up. Did the same exact thing it did last time. Those of you who watch my channel know that I fixed that one time and I put a grade 8 bolt in it, turned a grade 8 bolt uh, down and put in the, for the hammer pin in here. I don't know if it's the one that I made out of the grade 8 bolt that broke or if it's the other one, but either way, I guess we're getting the one inch out. Got to get the Harbor Freight out to do the job that Snap-on won't. You got something? What I don't like about this is this trigger right here is easy to bump. And uh, this turns too easy. And it weighs 30 pounds. Other than that, it'll take it off. I want to get me a, uh, I want to try out one of the Harbor Freight three quarter inch guns that they got. Uh, three quarter gun, I like doing this. It's a whole lot lighter and a lot less chance of uh, stripping lug nuts out or breaking them off. Other side had a balancer ring on it, this one doesn't. Huh. The 
looks like a brand new brake drum and a brand new hub on this thing if you look through this hole right here you see how shiny the uh, aluminum is behind there with this hub and this new plastic cap as well you can tell the studs are new I want to say these hub assemblies are about a thousand dollars possibly more and that's a brand new brake drum all the brakes on this thing look good like uh, just had brakes on it all right got my balancer stuck on this side now put this tire here back on Let's get my bar Really don't like this one inch. guys I decided to swap the tires off of my other truck on the rear axle onto this truck because the ones that was on the rear axle of this truck were getting kind of down there and these tires here still have a good bit of life left in them I really wanted to put them on this axle because these are newer than these and if you blow one out you really don't want it being up there on that plastic stuff but uh, that looked like it was gonna be too big of an ordeal it's big enough ordeal to jack two trucks up and swap tires from each side of them and whatnot um, I got to polish on these wheels a little bit they're so pitted they're the same thing they're actually worse um, I've sanded on them already as you can see but um, I've got some more stuff a polishing kit coming uh, I learned something on the polishing kit that I bought they got different stuff I bought a Zephyr kit and uh, the Zephyr kit is not the best kit I found out because it comes with plastic safety flanges and uh, if you let the grinder, I'm using a 9 inch grinder to polish with and if you let the grinder catch some holes it'll snatch and it breaks the plastic safety flanges and the, uh, the buffer disc itself does not have a welded center so it takes it out too and uh, they got buffer discs with welded centers and they got metal uh, safety flanges on them as well as they make some centerless buffs uh, which are not as common uh, that uses an aluminum center to center it but uh, so anyway I've got a welded center a couple welded center buffing wheels coming with metal safety flanges um, so I'm waiting to get them in I'll polish those wheels up the best I can and then as I say if the truck turns out to be a great truck or whatever uh, when I replace the tires again, I'll probably throw some new wheels on it, but that's not uh, the biggest ordeal uh, Anyway, I've got everything as far as tires and wheels go. I've got the truck greased oil changed all that good stuff uh, This truck has greaseless u-joints, which I do not like Show you that 
no grease alamites. So I don't know what the life of those things are, but uh, they I crawled all up under there. There's no slack in any of them. So I'm just gonna keep check on them. And uh, you know, once a month or whatever, I'll get up under there, check everything out and uh, try to make sure that I don't see anything getting loose or any rust around the joint uh, from a dry joint or any of that. So uh, the next thing I gotta do is swap I, well, I don't have to, but I need to swap my headache rack over and everything off of my other truck because I don't like, you know, I have had to get on the brakes hard before somebody pull out in front of you or whatnot or stop in front of you. They're bad about passing you up and, and uh, then they get up in front of you and hit the brakes and decide they want to turn, that sort of deal. And I have had that lumber slide up and get into the back of the headache rack which is not that big a deal, but if it gets into the back of the cab, it goes in between the exhaust right there, then you can see that it's gonna get wedged in there. And if you have to turn in order to pull over, you know, it's gonna tear some stuff up. So uh, I would like to get the headache rack swap put on here before um, I try to haul anything with it. So I gotta do that and then uh, get everything swapped over, some other little knickknack stuff, I'm sure. But uh, that's all I can think of for now. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.